Hello, beautiful children. It is amazing to see you in my mind's eye on this second day of the Omer. We count the Omer from the second night of um, Pesach, the second Seder night, all the way through to Shavuot, 49 times seven, seven weeks. <laughs> But today I'm going to be telling you, on Cholamayad, I'm going to be telling you two Pesach stories that SPS, some people say, aka also known as the Medrash, happened on the Seder night and at night. Hmm. But I'm going to tell you these stories as poems with rhyming words. Yeah, like yes and dress and no and show, for example. So we have two stories to tell and we have to roll back the time to tell them. Are you ready? Rolling back the time and one more, rolling back the time and one more, rolling back the time and thinking and thinking and thinking. I get idols in my story. I get a yucky general called Sisra in my story and a wonderful lady called Devorah in my story and Yael in my story. Now, what can I tell you about um, my story of Devorah? Well, before I turn it into a poem, I can tell you that my story of Devorah begins in the fourth chapter. If you read books or mummies and daddies read books, sometimes the big books have chapters, not just a few pages, it can be very long. And this is the story of Devorah in the book of Judges because Devorah was a judge, she was really clever and she was a leader and she was a prophetess. She knew what was going to happen in the future. And there was a general, a Jewish general called Barak who believed in her and he followed her prophecy. He followed what she said to go into battle against Sisra against this yucky general of Yavin, the king of Canaan, and Yael, who is courageous, is going to get rid of Sisra. And the fifth chapter relates to the song that Devorah sang, a lovely song upon the redemption of the Jews when the Jews were safe. So how did it all happen? How did they get safe? Well, I'm going to turn it into a poem, but Hashem was the answer. Hashem can do anything. And he made the stars so hot in the sky. And all these soldiers, the Canaanite soldiers, far, far more than, than the Jewish people. Maybe Jewish people don't have very many soldiers relative to the Canaanites. And they were a bit scared of the Sadonite. But all these Canaanite soldiers came and it was very hot in Israel. And the stars felt so hot that the soldiers decided to take off their armour. In those days, they wore heavy battle clothing like knights. And they went into the Kishon Brook to cool off. And Hashem swelled the brook. And that was the end of all of Sisra's army. And it happened at midnight. Here is my laminate that when I was taking the children's service, a lot of you children would see this story. Now let's turn it into a poem. What are the rhyming words in my poem? Let's see if you can spot them. There's going to be prophetess, somebody who can see in the future. Success, winners, being successful, winning. Torah, that's our holy Torah, our Jewish Bible. Ra, somebody who is bad, a baddie in Hebrew, Ra. Soldier, soldiers fight for their country. Bolder, when we have more confidence. Charmer, hmm, could be good or bad a charmer. Somebody's charming, usually it's very good. Armour, what the soldiers wore in those days and what knights wear or wore. Threat, when you feel a little bit scared of something, it's a bit threatening, you feel a little bit unsure, a little bit uncomfortable, it's a little bit dangerous, it's a little bit worrying. Don't worry, children, everything turns all right in my stories. And forget. I hope I don't forget all your names when I come back to the children's service, but a lot of you will already be in the older groups and there'll be all the new children for me to learn your names. Forget. Let's do the poem with laminates. Let's see if I can get it in order. A long time ago, Devorah was a leader and a judge. Hashem showed her the future as a prophetess. 
she reassured the Israelites that they would be free from the Canaanim and have great success. Woohoo! The Jews were told to give up idol worship and dedicate themselves to studying our holy Torah. But Sisra, the proud general of the Canaanite army, was a baddie, and in Hebrew we call him Ra. He marched to war against the Israelites with hundreds of chariots and many a strong soldier. According to the laws of nature, the Israelites had no chance of winning or getting any bolder. Midnight of Pesach, that Hashem was a star heater and charmer, so that all the hot soldiers jumped into a brook to cool off and removed all their armour. The waters gushed over them all and that was the end of the scary Canaanite threat. While a courageous woman called Yael got rid of Sisra and this story we now don't forget. That was the story of Devorah, the first story. Should we do one more story? I'll try not to make it too long. Second story. The second story has some very funny words in it. Mene, mene, tekel ufarsin. Hmm. I'll try not to tell you those words until it's time. Belshazzar, SPS, some people say, aka also known as the Medrash, was cruel and evil, even if he wasn't a Babylonian king, but he was one of the last Babylonian rulers before it got given to somebody called Darius from the um, new exile of Madai, Persian and Madai exile. And he began to rule or do what he was doing 67 years after the Jews were exiled to Babel because we had how many houses of Hashem? Two, two Bet Hamikdash, two temples. And the first one was destroyed by a very, very, very yucky person called Nebuchadnezzar. SPS, some people say, AKA also known as the Medrash, that Belshazzar's grandfather was the same yucky Nebuchadnezzar, runs in the family, the yucky stuff. And Nebuchadnezzar had stolen all the vessels from the first Bet Hamikdash, which he destroyed. For those in my children's service, I used to teach you about the B's and the R's. The Babylonians destroyed the first temple, the Romans destroyed the second temple. This story is the Babylonian story. Daniel was one of the captives from Judah. He was one of the prisoners that was taken and exiled, and he was able to interpret enigmas, interpret dreams. Belshazzar had a party. Did his rule end that night at that party? Yes or no? Well, let's see what poetry I've got. Let's see what the poem words will be. And before I do that, let me show you what I would have shown the children at my children's service. Mene, mene, tekel or farsin. Your days have been numbered and they are too few. What's that got to do with the poem? Let's find out the story. Okay, what are the words? Well, I will have Bet Hamikdash. Actually, I'll show you the laminates when we do our poem. Bet Hamikdash rhymes with a nasty rush. I have a party. Is it a good party? Is it creative or arty? Hmm, mene mene tekel or farsin. I have somebody who's able to interpret dreams. Is it all as it seems? We need lots of might to end cruelty on that Pesach night. 
let's read the story. This story took place after the destruction of our first special house of Hashem, the Bet Hamikdash. Belshazzar, maybe the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, who destroyed our temple in a nasty rush, was showing off all the kalim, the vessels that had been stolen at a huge big party. When he spied a hand writing on the wall and no one thought it was creative or arty. Mene, mene, tekel or farsin. Along came Daniel, one of the prisoners from Judah, wise and able to interpret dreams. The words mene, mene, tekel or farsin were easy peasy lemon squeezy for him, it seems. Your kingdom will be broken and given to Persia and Madai, Daniel said with all his might. And Belshazzar's rule of cruelty and evil to Jews ended on that Pesach night. Well, children, I hope you've enjoyed those two stories um, about Pesach for Pesach, that maybe you can tell your mummies and daddies and your brothers and sisters or whoever's in your bubble over the days of Yontif. And uh, maybe you can act out the story or maybe your mummies and daddies have special Pesach stories of their own. Maybe you can talk about all of their uh, happy Pesach times and what they used to do and what they used to eat and whether it's the same or whether it's different Hope you're enjoying the sunny weather today if you're in the garden or you're out in a park or you're just sitting and relaxing. I hope you're having the best time ever and the best Pesach ever and I hope to see you very soon. Listen to your mummies and daddies and do what they say. Listen to your mummies and daddies, please don't forget to pray. Listen to your mummies and daddies, our rabbis lead the way. Then they will be happy. See you soon. Bye.